Hey, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Today we're going to do a Daiwa reel. It's the Daiwa Saltus. It's a 6.1 to 1 fishing reel. This is a star drag reel and it's the Daiwa 20H uh, Saltus. So if you have one of these reels or you're thinking about buying one uh, or if you have one that you're currently working on or need to service, please stay tuned. That's what this is going to be about. We will show you how to take this apart, how to replace the drags because the owner of that reel had asked for a upgrade to carbon tax drag washers and uh, how to clean service and put this reel back out there fishing again. So the Saltist is one of these uh, new era reels if you will. They're, they're not the chunky old major uh, <clears throat> saltwater fishing reels that we're used to from uh, days ago but rather they're designed around braid and since braid is so much thinner and stronger you can put a lot more capacity in a smaller format and, uh, and that allows you to fish with lighter tackle, which is kind of what the, the trend is these days. <clears throat> so we'll uh, start by removing the external pieces and parts. As we do, I want to thank our first responders and essential personnel and everybody helping to keep us safe during the pandemic. And I want to reiterate an offer that I have that if you're a first responder, uh, police, EMT, fire, if you work in a hospital, if you're a doctor, nurse, administrator, uh, or anybody that's involved in the uh, front lines, then I want to offer to you to service your favorite reel at no charge to you. So I'm going to do that through the end of January. Contact me uh, by email on a business card that follows, and I'll give you the specifics for that. Okay, so we, uh, we started by removing the set screw for the handle. This is a tool that's available through uh, mysticparts.com. It's a multi-tool. Uh, it, it, Pretty much covers the cap nuts for Shimano. These are pens, the uh, two sizes of the pens, <clears throat> and some Shimano products as well. I'm just going to go ahead and line that up, and uh, that'll help me get that off. That tool is not that expensive. If you work on fishing reels a lot, then I would recommend getting a tool like that to uh, help you. It's a longer tool. It has more leverage, and uh, the leverage is all about... Uh, helping you make it easier for you. One of the things I also suggest that you do is go ahead and head onto the internet, go get the schematic for the reel. That schematic is going to tell you where the pieces and parts go, and if you need to order them, it'll give you the part numbers associated with that. I think that one came from uh, realschematics.com, but uh, there's other sites out there that will have the schematic. Just do an internet search. Put your reel in and put the word schematic in and, and you'll usually be directed to uh, a site that has those for you. D Daiwa actually has uh, schematics for their newer reels on their site uh, and there are others out there as well. All right, this uh, came out from the top of the star adjuster and this is a star adjuster reel. This is not a uh, um, lever drag reel. A lot of these formats are lever drag reels. They, some of them come in both flavors. Just going to spin that off. It goes in a counterclockwise motion. I'm going to put that little piece right back into the center where it came out of, and I'm going to put that into my parts tray. I just used the bottom of a, a jug or a container. In this case, I think that was from salt melt or something, but uh, never, never fear reusing it. This is the click mechanism, the thing that you heard making the noise. And then uh, keeping in sequence, we next have two tension washers that. Uh, they, they control the, the uh, variability on that star adjuster, whether it's a, uh, a lot of uh, motion or not. Then we have the first of the ball bearings there. So that's generally where I stop when I go to remove a case. So we have four screws on that side, no screws on the back, always worth checking on this. Some of the models out there do have the uh, uh, screws in the back as well. I think Penn is one of those that uh, does it that way. And some of them also have them underneath the spool, like a traditional round bait caster. So check there as well if you remove the four case screws and you do not uh, have that case moving. All right, so we're going to just uh, take these out. So if you like this kind of thing, if you enjoy watching this, uh, if you want to get involved in the hobby of this, if you want to uh, just uh, see other reels and how other reels are made, then I ask you to subscribe to my channel. I service all kinds of reels, all manufacturers and brands. Just the other day I posted a reel that's 100 years old. So uh, 
it even surprised me. I didn't realize it was as old as it was. I knew it was probably 60 or 70 years old, but somebody came back and said the, the reel was manufactured in 1915. Well, that makes it over 100 years old. So, yeah. Uh, so if you like to see those kinds of things, please subscribe. And as we're going along, if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section. I do try to respond to all the, the questions that are posted. And um, i got to admit, uh, with the subscriber base that I have, it's getting a little bit more difficult, but I still try to get that done on a regular basis. And then finally, if uh, you do need to contact me, there's a business card that will follow. And uh, just reach out to me by email. That's the best. And I will try to uh, respond to your emails uh, as well. There's a phone number on there to call, but i got to be honest with you, I only get the phones once or twice a day, and I really don't have the time during the day to return those phone calls, so you may get a call at an odd hour if, uh, if you do leave me a phone message. Okay, I think we got the last one out here. You'll notice I was laying all of those on my desk. I want to make sure that those screws are the same size, which they are. And if they were small on one or longer on another, you would want to just mark the spot where those uh, changed, and then you would take them off from there. That should enable me to remove the cover, and it does. We have a little bit of dirt in the back here, so it's time to be uh, cleaned up and serviced. Whenever you take these off, make sure that you are careful, and make sure that you contain those springs, because those springs will shoot. That's the nature of a spring. Once you take those two springs out, note the orientation here. Right, the springs came on top. I can't tell you how many times I get a question that the, somebody's taking a reel apart, can't put it back together, and they're trying to put the spring underneath the yoke. Well, that, that's not where they go. They go on the top side of it here. All right, I think we can probably, nope, we're not going to be able to do it that way. Let's move the main gear out. we got to take the main gear out anyway because we're being asked to change the, the drag washers there. And we also want to clean behind there. This has a traditional... Uh, friction dog set here. Notice the, the operation of that as you're turning forward it backs off. As soon as you go to close it down the dog sets. Now we can take the yoke and the pinion gear off. We should be able to take both the dog and the click ratchet off as well. And that will enable us to clean the casing here. There's one more piece here. You just saw it just slide down there. This is the jack. I'm going to remove that so that I can get the old grease from the face or the backing of this uh, this gear set here. I just want to get the old grease off of there. It's got a lot of dirt in it and the typically the old dirt becomes an enemy of the fishing reel. It'll bog down the process. If it contains any contaminants in it, it'll uh, expedite the wear of the pieces and the parts. And it's uh, generally not a good thing overall. All right, that was, this is a relatively clean reel. If anything, the reel probably needed more grease uh, rather than have the grease cleaned up. It's the back side of the jack. I'm going to use fishing reel grease. I generally tell everybody I don't care what grease you use, but use fishing reel grease. In this case, I'm using pen precision reel grease. It's a blue grease and uh, serves me well. I'm going to butter up the back of that and I'm going to slide that once it came. Just like that. Set that in. And then you can get some on the front of that as well. Okay, we want to clean up this, so we'll take the yoke off. We use a paper towel just to wipe that off because there's nothing there that's really wearing at it. I'm going to check the Pinion gear to make sure that that's okay. A little bit of grease on there, so let's get the old stuff off. Otherwise, this looks good. Remember, this came to the front. There's a shoulder on the spool here. That's going to fit that way, so when you go to reinstall, that's the front. I'm going to go ahead and grease this again. A little bit onto the shoulder area. And the back side where that jack is going to slide. Go ahead and put the pinion gear on and do the same thing. Grease the teeth of the pinion gear. And then we can set that in. 
Remember that that goes on the shoulder side of the spool. And then it rides down on the collar just like that. And then these, this is where your springs are going to sit. We're going to move that up so we can move the, the yoke down as much as we can. I'll take a look at this. This is a friction piece. This, these teeth do not need to close on the tines, but they do need to be tight enough to grip the, uh, the ratchet. We have a ratchet and we have a, a little uh, ring that's going to sit behind our main gear. So let's go ahead and put that back on. Simply thread it, get it into position, bring it over the top of the, uh, the shaft. And then the shaft is going to sit. There's a, uh, a square side to it, so make sure that it's in, in that, that slot there. Sometimes it's difficult to see, but if, if, you, uh, if you look through here, you'll know whether that's there or not. Or you can take this off and reinstall that way. All right, we were asked to, to install with new uh, Carbontex washers. The uh, fellow that owns this reel says that this was getting a little bit uh, uh, worn, so he asked me to, uh, to do that. So we're going to go ahead and do that. So overall those washers don't look terrible, but we'll start with new. Cleaning up the bottom, that might have been some of the cause of this, just that there's a lot of, a lot of dirt, and when, uh, when you get dirt in there, they tend to, to slip more. I'm going to check all the teeth on the main gear, make sure that there's no chips or broken pieces and parts. Do the same thing here with this main gear, we're going to go in and get a good amount of grease on those teeth. You don't have to get it in every tooth. The rotation of the reel will spread the, the grease around and actually if you get too much on there it's just going to throw it off to the side and uh, there's no benefit to that just lying around in the case. All right, we've got that. We're going to go ahead and reinstall the main gear back on here then. Just like that. Now we should have a series of washers and metals. And again, we want to make sure that these washers and metals are clear. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and get the, the new ones out. I got these from Smooth Drag. For those of you that are uh, wondering, smoothdrag.com provides these. And they are carbon, carbon techs. Carbon Tex washers are more rugged. Than most of the manufacturers that seems use the Carbon Tex today, uh, long days gone for the, the old leather washers for sure. But a carbon fiber and Carbon Tex washers it says may be used dry or lightly greased. Cal's Universal Real Dry, dry Grease is recommended. Well, I have that. And as it turns out, I have a carbon text for the back here, so we're going to go ahead and pull this off. And we'll take this off as well. Take the whole assembly off, it's easier. That's the one. So now you can see there's a square there, a rectangle, a square. That's what I was describing before, but just make sure you see it. That's how you mount it again. This is kind of redoing for those that uh, may not have been paying attention the first time. And then hold pressure on this and just turn your shaft and you'll find that you do seat into that square. All right, so this is the back end for that. And back and put the main gear on. This is washer number one. Now I happen to have Cal's Universal Drag Grease, so I'm going to show you how to do this. Get the the washer in to the grease. Use your gloved hand, that's a latex glove, to kind of work it around. They say lightly greased, so what that means is don't leave it on there. Wipe it off when you're done. So that you can see the cross hatching on it. And then just place it in. And that's the first one. All right, now you have two round washers, but one you'll notice is thicker than the other. The thicker one belongs up top. And again, 
pay attention. You got to be kind of aware of what you're doing here as you're doing it. I'm going to do this a second time. We'll get that grease and we'll work that all the way around. Both sides, get that paper towel or wipe them off so that you can see the cross hatching. And that's to keep these things flexible. It really doesn't provide any more uh, gripping power, but it does uh, provide for flexibility. This one is an eared washer. The two points sit in the recesses of the, uh, the main gear. The last one of the washers to be kind of worked on. So this keeps the grease off your hand and acts as a tool. Enables you to spread it. Again, we'll wipe that down. Put that last one on. Close up our grease. Now this is the heavy washer that went next. So that goes back on, and we have that little cap, and then this is for the back of the bearing. Goes on next. Now we're going to go ahead and turn our attention to the inside of the case just to make sure we clean that. I should be able to just do that with a paper towel, and I'll just use a cotton swab to clean up some of the recesses. But again, this case is. It's fairly clean. Okay, you can put a little drop of oil. I'm going to use Real X. Put a drop of oil into the the anti-reverse clutch. So you have two things going here. You have that anti-reverse clutch, and then you have the fail-safe, which is the uh, the other washer or the other uh, dog. Now this bearing here, we're going to just oil it up. The owner said that. Uh, the bearings you'd like to check on. I did check, do a check on that. I didn't see anything before I turned the camera on there that would indicate that that's a problem in any regard. So uh, I'm going to just kind of leave them oil them. All right, here's your two springs. They mount on the top. As I mentioned when we took the case off. And then what you want to do on this, I generally like to bring this up to the top. And when you go in with the case, you got to merge it with this little uh, hole in the uh, the piece of uh, the, the jack there and it's pretty precision so just bring it on press it down and then we're going to work this till we feel it click in well there's the bearing came out already that's okay let's just remove that okay now as you do that just put pressure on the side plate and then if uh, you can see I was pretty close because it just sucked it right in as soon as I moved that. Give it a spin. Make sure that you're you're feeling that. All right, here's that bearing again. No big deal, but I did uh, just wipe off all the oil I just put on there, so we're just going to give it another bath. And we can go ahead and put that back on. That'll get seated in there. Next up. If you were taking pictures or following the video or whatever, we have these two tension washers. That allows for the variability on the star adjuster. And next up, and this is why a parts tray is so nice. You just, just kind of look in there and see what you can see. That's our click mechanism. And then I'm going to start now. I'll leave that off for a moment. I'm going to start by back to putting those case screws in because my thumb is getting tired. All right. So overall, it's a nice reel. I think uh, from a material standpoint, I'm not seeing any wear on this one. It would say that this has uh, been abused or can't take the abuse. I don't know how, how steadily this reel is fished, but uh, it uh, looks like it's set to fish a long time. It's got a high gear ratio, right, to 6.1 to 1. Makes it ideal for uh, casting and lure fishing on fast retrieves. So around here on our coast, uh, that would probably be a, a striped bass or a bluefish or something like that that's an aggressive predator that likes to chase fish fleeing it uh, as a predator. And this one would certainly help to replicate that, uh, that type of an action by the high retrieve. And I'm just gonna see if I can't grab A different screwdriver there. I'm slipping a little bit. Nope. All right, that's just going to be a matter of some patience here. 
So yeah, so that's kind of how it's used. And like I said, it's kind of obsoleted the older, older style that used the, the heavier monofilament lines to deal with a 20 pound uh, aggressive fish. And uh, now you can get that in a braid that's uh, literally hair thin, right? So those of you that fish the braid, braid know exactly why you do that. Okay, I'm going to just throw that out of the way so I can get the last two screws in. And then we're going to go over to the other side. I'll show you. We'll take the spool out. We'll make sure that those bearings on that side get uh, get the oil they need. I oil bearings. I don't uh, don't grease them. I think that the grease attracts a lot of contaminants and holds them if you're in a salt water environment. And most of the reels around here, including the naming of this one, Saltist, uh, kind of keep it into the uh, the salt. If you're casting from shore, it's the sand. Uh, it's the micro sand in the air, and uh, all of that kind of sticks to grease. So if I use the oil, yeah, oil is going to evaporate quicker, and you're going to need to uh, to take care of it a little bit more on that regard. But I think at the end of the day, you're probably saving yourself a headache with uh, the dirty greased uh, bearings. All right, now I can come back. Put the, the last few pieces on this side and then we'll go over to the other side. First up then is the star adjuster. We took this off in a counterclockwise direction so it goes back on in a clockwise. You take your time and hand thread it. Sometimes I make it more difficult than it is because I'm trying to do it for the camera but uh, just take your time, be patient as you're going to put it in, and then we have this, this little spacer here. Then you can hold your your shaft. If you're having a little trouble holding the shaft, then I'm just checking operation. We're in pretty good shape there. Nice. Uh, use your handle. Use your handle if, if you're having trouble with that. I'm going to leave the handle in a bucket for a moment. Go over to the other side and take care of business there. Again, we have the three uh, side plate screws here. This side we have a click assembly. There'll be a bearing over here. There'll be the spool. Notice that the saltest orientation is e uh, parallel to the real seat. So little things that as you go to reinstall uh, are important. I just did that 100-year-old uh, reel, the Meisselback. And uh, I, was, I thought my mind told me it belonged on one side with the, the orientation of the clicker and it belonged on the other. So don't trust your mind. Take a picture right now if you're not using a schematic or if you're not doing it. Your pictures can be on cell phone, it can be on a digital camera, it can be on a, uh, on a video camera if you like. All right. We have two uh, spool brakes over here. Notice these, the red pieces. We're going to pull that out. There's a little bit of dirt that's accumulated in the spool. There's a bearing on here. I think that's a bearing. Nope, that's a collar. So let's just go ahead and clean that up. I'm using a Q-tip just to get into the deep recesses. It's just a collar, but I'm going to go ahead and put some oil on that side. Same here. When I reinstall, I like to make sure that those the spool brakes are all the way in. I can't tell you the number of times that I get fishing reels in and folks say I was working on it and I put it back together and it's seized and I don't uh, don't understand why it's not working and then you come to find out that the bearings got trapped on these outer rings, uh, the brakes, not the bearings. The brakes got trapped here. This pressed into them and the spool couldn't move. Alright, a little bit of oil in the back here. some grease onto the two terminuses of the spool. Spool shaft. Help that spin easier. We're going to go ahead and put the... That's the other bearing. I was looking for it. Make sure we get oil onto the back of this bearing. Now I can put that spool shaft back in. 
And when you go to put that back in, make sure you don't trip, uh, trap the braid in the inside the spool. I don't like generally working with line. You can see it here. It just trapped in here. I generally do not like working on a reel with line, but if they come in with line, I kind of have to work around it. Some folks have said, go ahead and tape it and do some other things. Well, I don't. Okay, let's just see if we can't put this back together now. Easy enough in. Three side plate screws. And all we have to do is put the handle on and give it a test. Kind of know already because we've kind of swung it around with the star adjuster on, but you're never quite sure how that reel is going to work until you give it that final test there. So uh, let's hold on to that. And one more down below here. And we should be good to go with a handle and uh, a fresh cleaning, a fresh lubrication, a changeover on the uh, dry washers. We should be set. Okay, we have that little spacer that goes to the handle side. This is where the uh, pictures would help. I'm not going to go back right now and run that, but I don't remember whether I was on the leverage position or not. So that's just a, a typical example there of just not trusting your memory. That, that's one of the lesser, lesser harmed problems that you could have. And then you want to align the, the indentation in the cap with the set screw hole. Grab that set screw. And we can get that done. And then we can give it a ride. Okay, let's just do a quick quick test there. Very nice. Quick spin. Check, you have an adjuster here. If it's too tight and you want it spinning more freely, just back it off. Oops, I have it in gear. If you want to adjust it to the, the nearest side, that's okay. Tighten it up a little bit. All right, that's it. That's your Daiwa Saltist. It's the uh, 20H. It's uh, 6.1 to 1. Beautiful reel. And uh, I hope you've enjoyed that. So. Again, if you can subscribe, please subscribe. Please hit notifications so that you don't miss any of the uh, videos that I post, and I do post frequently. Please uh, leave your questions as comments. If you're a first responder and are interested in me working on your reel at no charge to you, then uh, please contact me by email. And finally, if uh, if you have a reel that needs to be worked on and you're, and you're like Tom here who uh, sent this reel in, uh, then let me know uh, in an email and I'll provide you with the information. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Thank you for watching.